heard my speech on the ranking system already? Show of hands. Other than this. There's like four people who haven't come here yet. Yeah. No. No. All right. <laughs> Let's do it again! Do it. All right, so. Okay. Just like the owl. You, you, you guys that are new, or is Sam, who haven't, haven't heard the ranking system speak before, by the end of the night, we'll give you a DVG guidebook. So you can read it instead of having to listen to Kurt talk about it. Right. Whatever. It's cool. Do you have some uh, No, but we have five up in the water. So okay, so I guess we'll run it. Yeah, we need to print more because we have so many numbers. Yep. Alright, anyway, so I keep track of people, solve problems. I'm also doing a game in the indie game contest. If you haven't signed up already, you should get on that. Well, it's February 22nd. We'll talk more about that soon. We'll talk more about that later. Yeah. Alright, any questions so I can feel important? No? Who does your job? <laughs> I do my job. <laughs> now I'm Six foot four. I, I know. Yes. <laughs> if you're at least six foot tall, maybe. Because you're intimidating. One inch short. <laughs> All right. We don't have the wireless mic anymore? No. Say something! Say something. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Name this is a good afternoon, or are you asking me? I'm having a good uh, afternoon. My name is John. I'm the VP of events. I help book stuff and uh, spitball ideas for events. People call me Steve. Were you, weren't you just waving? Goodbye.
thought it was because we couldn't actually remember his real name. <laughs> I thought it was because we hated him. No, it's definitely because we love to hate him. Um, essentially, what his job is, is to plan our events, which can sometimes be extremely elaborate. For example, the indie game contest where we have to rent out around 10 TV, TVs, projectors, and an entire floor of a building. So his job is a little bit more work than he let on. But if you have an idea for an event, one of the first people you should talk to is Steve, so that he can tell you whether it would work or not. For example, if you want to do paintball in a gym, it's probably not going to happen for rules that Steve would know. Just then there's Gigi. So Gigi has several primary jobs. She is the primary contact of the organization. So in other words, if you send an email to our club, she's the one who reads it and decides who it goes to. So for example, if it goes to her, then she deals with it right away. If it's a finance question, it goes to Chris. If it's a, it, it just goes to whoever it needs to go to. She's the Sarah she's Dollar of the organization. Yeah, she's sort of like the, the foundation that everyone else stands on and makes sure that happens. I'm sort of the sunlight that beams down everyone and burns you to death. Yeah. And, and then there's Janie, and her job is to make sure that important people come and talk at this club. And that people who have graduated from this club come back and to get new people into this club. So in other words, she's in charge of maintaining the image of DDG. Kurt, Kurt's in charge of the yeah. alumni. Uh, which is becoming increasingly important because as of last semester, we have reached double digit alumni. Woo! Woo! You guys are so excited. I think the pizza made them slow. This year we're going to have 13. 13. All right. So, without further ado, let's get this meeting on the road. I think we should go around and uh, introduce ourselves from the new people that are here tonight. Uh, in addition to saying your name, and uh, you should stand up so we can see who you are. That'd be helpful. And we will never forget. And, uh, and say a game that you played over winter break that stands out to you. We'll start over here. Go ahead and stand up and say your name and say a game that you played over winter break. All right. My name is Jared Rickster. Um, game I played. Play uh, Borderlands. <laughs> Olivier, I play right, I'll get back to you. I'm Albert Briggs. Uh, game I played over winter break would be Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3. Woo! My name is Patrick Fitzgerald. Game Whoa. I played was probably the most I played was Minecraft. Oh, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> 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 okay. My name is Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> That's my boy. There we go. Yeah. Come on, guys, guys, come on. It's the rum diary. Game I played was Sonic Adventure. <laughs> I'm John Whitfield. Game I played was Chris's favorite game, PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. Yes. No. No. Nobody's favorite game. The game is awesome. I'm trying to. But it's so awesome. Half the staff got laid off. That's what happened. Right. Come on. Hi, right, I'm Brian Booker. Brian, please. Over here. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Sean Ward, and it's like seven years old or whatever, but I um, played Fry Morrowind the most. Yeah. Oh, uh, My name is Sam. I played League of Legends because it really gives me herpes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all on camera. My name is Eugene. I played League of Legends and Torchlight. Yeah. One or two? One. Okay. I'm 
Jeremy Lanham, and uh, I ended up playing Fireball over the winter break. What? Jail? How? All right, Greg. I have a friend. Uh, my name is Gregory Dorzo, and I played the Defiance Bait. Magnum Bite. Uh, I'm Eric Glazer. I played a mix of Walking Dead and Mario Tower Door. There we go. About half of us is on good. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Brad Fisher. I'm a new member here. I've been playing a lot of Key Fortress too. Cool. Yeah. 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 I'm Andre, and I've been playing a lot of, well, I'm Andre you say, I've been playing a lot of Dragon Quest 6. Yeah. My name is uh, Nick Hurley, and uh, I've been playing, uh, I'll say, Sleeping Dogs. Christopher Linz Jr. Um, and one of the games I played over the break was um, Super Smash Brothers Melee and Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Playing that with my cousin. Say what we played, Chris. Okay, sure. Uh, over winter break, break, played through Walking Dead, all of it. No yeah. spoilers. And uh, what? what did I play? Beat it yet? Oh, I played a uh, 3D dot game Heroes. Anyone play that? Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Is it as funny as you thought it was going to be? Yeah, it is. It's really excellent. It's like Blake's. And I play Super X-Gun. You're right. I played Super X-Gun. That was awesome. So, let's see. What I play? Um, I officially stopped playing Minecraft. Because I finished building a computer. Um, I played Borderlands 2, Minecraft, Binding of Isaac, uh, a lot of King Arthur's Gold, and I played a lot of other things very quickly. And took up kickboxing again. Uh, <laughs> uh, I played Capital Crashers. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what it's called. I right played now. being poor. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yes. That was my And uh, I played uh, Dead Island, which is really fun. I don't know what it is. You mean Castle Crashers? Yeah. It's no, talking weird. about their big anyway, game. Gene, Gene. Oh, um, I've played Assassin's Creed, Creed <laughs> and I uh, finished Dark Souls 2. Did you play Assassin's Creed 3? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know. Chris. No one knew. I'll, I'll, I'll never be another Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Uh, which makes me very sad. I, uh, I played Catch Up. I played all the way through Brotherhood and Revelations and Assassin's Creed 3. I'm sorry. I'm not. Revelations was not. So many hours you could have spent playing WoW. It's cheaper. No, it's not. And then I also played Portal 2. I know I'm behind on that one too. Oh man. Yeah, Portal 2 was amazing. This is great. The co-op games are the only things that you can do. Everything that doesn't have a local two-player should just be. So. We've all, uh, we've all got our feels out there. We all know each other now. We all clap for each other, probably. Yeah, we all know each other now. <laughs> Let's all give a nice round of applause for ourselves. <laughs> so, uh, John Steve, I think, uh, I think it'd be a good time to go over the calendar for this semester. Do you remember the signal? Yeah. Okay. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I thought it was... Whatever you want, Chris. <laughs> oh, great. Albert Steve. <laughs> great. It's fantastic. 20 minutes. How could you? Oh, come on.
on, Albert. Take it out. He's flying towards you. This is great filler right here. <laughs> Don't do it. He's going to break your neck. <laughs> Albert will never walk again. <laughs> Wait, he's walking. It's a miracle. All right, guys. All right, all right, all right. Okay, we're all happy about August and Albert finally. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're gonna <laughs> just open it and explore, please. Chris, I'm calling you. Explorer to download Google Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got a we got a fun-filled semester plan for everyone, especially those that can stay for the entire meeting. That's that'd be cool too. You know. Finally, finally, uh, Steve's opening it up now. We got something planned for every single week of the semester. No tournament this semester, guys. No tournament. Sorry. Sorry. Stay. Yep. Taking John Steve's hat with you. <laughs> Oh, just a run diary. There you go. There you go. That's good. So we got some. Come on, John. Oh, thank you. Oh, God. Oh, my God. John Steve, this is your calendar. <laughs> this is yours. This is not DDG's calendar. <laughs> Hey, what are we doing on Groundhog Day? Are we watching are we Groundhog Day? John yeah. Steve, put up the DDG calendar, not your calendar. game design uh, workshop next week, and that's going to start August and Kurt playing Magic the Gathering. Woo! Oh, okay. Woo! So uh, it's going to be about it's going to be about balancing gameplay systems, and the headlining tool is going to be uh, Magic the Gathering as an example. Um, well, essentially, we'll be going through Magic the Gathering and how Magic the Gathering has evolved over the past 22 years, and why it's been the most balanced card game of all time. Oh, uh, no. Are you uh, sure? No. Oh. I thought there was word of an unofficial draft tournament afterwards. Did you seriously put my new jacket on the floor? Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, just, yeah, the whole, the whole fun <laughs> part of the day is ruined. So, <laughs> come by for the game balancing workshop. It'll take, all of our workshops take place during our meetings. So, if you're available for the meetings, please come by for the workshops. Uh, the following week on the 14th of February, that's Valentine's Day, and wow. as a love letter to all of DDG, Kurt is going to give a new public presentation wow. workshop. Love you, Kurt. Yay. I love you too. It's going to be great. Um, I'll talk to that special someone. Yeah, I'll talk to that special someone, <laughs> i.e. the special venture capitalist someone. <laughs> How I love your money. Kurt, do you want to talk a little more about, uh, about your public presentation workshop? Yeah, I thought it was the week after. Cool. Um, nope. Nope, about it. nope, it's a 14. Well, anyway, I'm going to uh, give you some tips on how to make a public presentation, how to prepare for one. Um, I'm going to send out like a short 50 word, like have something to say so we can have something to work with to make it more of a you know, workshop where you're, you're doing stuff. Um, so keep a lookout for that. If you don't see it in the next like seven days, shoot me an email and be like, hey, Kurt, you didn't send this to me. And I'll be like, thank you. All right, cool. Yeah, that, that's good. All right, what are you I'm, doing? I'm, what's that? What is that? What are you doing, Kurt? Excuse me? What was that? It was, it was, my, it was my wave, like oh. my gesture. <laughs> <laughs> I was not pounding my chest. I thought you were trying to pound.
found a tumor on your lung. <laughs> I also have a tumor in my lung. Oh, there you go. It's, it's, it's uh, not malignant or whatever. Anyway. Glad that's been settled. It's um, Charlie Sheen. So yeah, public presentations are really important. You're going to make them a lot throughout your life, from basic being prepared for an interview to pitching your idea to somebody who you want them to give you money. So It's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. All right. The following week, we have a non-officer operated workshop taking place. It's very exciting. It's uh, an environmental modeling workshop, specifically 3D, environmental 3D modeling techniques, presented by Gregory Dorval. Yay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> He's going to go through some tips and tricks of how to leverage the 3DS Max software into the best possible environments that your computer can generate. Yes? Mm -hmm. yes? Good. Good. It will we'll be fun. The following week, and we'll start taking uh, volunteers for this next week, is the long-delayed great game design debate <laughs> number two. <laughs> <laughs> great game design debate number two. Yes, I know, right? Uh, the first one was just that good. I know. That's <laughs> right. It was so <laughs> mysterious. <laughs> That's going to be February 28th. And if you did not win the last one, you can participate in this one. All right, that's cool. Huh? So what's the topic of this great game design debate number two? I'll tell you what it is. It's uh, cross-media properties, you know, how they've infiltrated our uh, in increasingly commercialized video game industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether it's a good or bad thing for video games to build games around being applicable to books and movies and comics, or just to focus on uh, video games as a medium. We'll talk about that. That'll be a really uh, chill. Huh? What? What other one? <coughs> no. Free play stuff. See, Sam, you weren't even here. I remember you. You weren't even here. <laughs> That's all. So we'll, we'll we'll start taking volunteers for that next week. And as always, the winners of the great game design debate will receive a copy of the first issue of the Phoenix Wright manga for the trouble. Mm. Again? Again? <laughs> again? What do you mean again? Is this? Huh? Is there? Oh yeah, I'm supposed to buy a Chipotle. Yeah, okay. So it's, tri it's Chipotle or Phoenix Wright Manga. Hint, hint, I highly prefer the Phoenix Wright Manga. Chipotle or Manga? It's Chipotle. Is that the money that's going to go into it? No. Because it's state money, believe it or not. I can't just hand it out to people. Can I get an amalgamation so it's a manga about Chipotle? I, I don't know. I'll have to scour Japan. <laughs> All right, John Steve, here's the hand signal. Good? Good? V for victory. Yeah, no. Right. <laughs> All right, so uh, there, there's our Thursday one. The 7th, 20th, the 7th and 20th of March and the 4th of April are all open dates right now. There are three events that are going to take place over those three dates. There's the uh, DVG election. There is a playtesting session for indie game contest participants to bring in their games and have them playtested by us at large. That'll be great, I'm sure. Very constructive. And then uh, thirdly, and this is what the other two events are contingent on, is the, uh, an interview workshop starring an interviewer from... Well, we have contacts at two local gaming companies. We have contacts <laughs> at ZeniMax, if you guys are familiar with them. Who knows a game that was made by ZeniMax? Rogue uh, Warrior. <laughs> uh, Skyrim is one of them. The Fallout series. Dishonored. Dishonor. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't make they also, it. They, they did another one, didn't they? Um, Rogue Warrior. No, it was Rage. <laughs> rage. They did Rage. Ben, ben, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and also, I recently acquired Contact at Zemex Online. And these are the head IHR people. I mean, these are the people who interview you for your job. Her name's Amy, right? Yeah, Amy. Oh, yeah. She's gonna, they're gonna, <laughs> one of these people are going to come in and tell you how to get interviewed at their company. Yeah, the inside tips and tricks that you would usually have to fail an interview for in order to find out. I'm going to come to you directly from HR Eds at Zenimax or Zenimax Online Entertainment. So the exact dates of those three events, once I, like I said earlier, are contingent on <coughs> when those people are available. So, can I make a shout out real fast? Yeah. Um, on the 
the 6th, which I believe is next Wednesday or something. But yeah, the, on the 6th of February, the Professional Development Institute on the third floor of the Student Center is doing their resume workshops. Um, so if you have a resume, take, or you don't, take you know what, something that resembles a resume. Take, oh my <laughs> <laughs> like a boss. Right. Take something that resembles a resume, head up there, they'll give you useful feedback. Tell you about what, you know what's good, what works, what doesn't, what you should think about. Um, it's, a, it's a really useful resource, and you know, unless you already have a perfect resume, which statistics say you don't, um, <laughs> you can learn something from it. All right, cool. Then on the 14th <coughs> of uh, March, John, Steve, can you click on that to bring up the event description for that? I don't remember what the topic is. For that. It's another great game design debate. Another one you say, yes, we're going to do all three of the ones that we're supposed to do this semester, this semester, believe it or not. Hey, we're actually going to do the amount of game design debates that we set out to do at the beginning of the year, pending a blizzard <coughs> or something, which is what caused <coughs> game design debate number two to be delayed. So, or a hurricane. Try to do. All right, oh yeah, this, yeah, or a hurricane. You know, it is climate change, I guess. Yeah. Maybe a hurricane. We're all going to die. Yeah. <laughs> the inevitable heat death of the universe takes place. We'll, we'll have to uh, have to delay. <laughs> no, nothing anyway, will delay. Game design debate number three is going to be a discussion on episodic gaming, episodic structure for video games, and if it's, you know, good or bad. Oh, All right. So tell me more about what an episode of a game is. Okay. Well, that's an interesting uh, question, Kurt. For those of you that don't know, episode, what, John, Steve? I was going to suggest an example. Are you going to suggest Walking Dead? Yeah. Okay, thank you, John Steve. Ooh. Sam and Max, Half-Life. Sam and Max, Half-Life, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's totally episodic, guys. It'll just be like four years in between episodes. <laughs> but uh, episodic game <laughs> is where uh, instead of releasing one long video game, a uh, publisher releases several smaller chunks of the game over a set period of time, or if you're Valve, whenever you feel like it. Um, you know, this is. You know what's sad is they probably have some fans that literally died before they could play it. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so uh, you know, we're we're going to discuss whether that's a good or a bad thing. Perhaps from a business side, perhaps from a game design side, and a narrative arcs, uh, you know, discussion. You know, it's up to the it's up to the people in the debate to take it in the direction they want to take it. But it's going to be about episodic gaming. Uh, can you take it back to the uh, calendar and just move it on to April? Yeah, no. No, he's, he was sitting over there. Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, April 11th, we have another August Bender workshop. And he'll probably be able to explain it better than I will. Go ahead, August. This is a free scanning print. All right, so. For those of you who don't know, I got my first job outside of college. I am a lead holographer. And does anyone know what that is? A snake oil salesman? I know, right? <laughs> um, no, I work for a company that make that 3D scans objects for museums and governments and then makes them into holograms. And I'm going to teach you the basics of 3D scanning and how to do it for free using things that you already have. Like, for example, your iPhone. I can teach you how to make a 3D model of something that exists in real life with your iPhone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can teach you how to do it to the point of, we're going to go through low depth, low poly objects to high poly objects, including 14 megabit, um, or 14 megapixel pictures. Because I will be bringing a camera for you guys for that. And then if we have time, I will be teaching you how to actually make a hologram using stuff you can get from OTS. We're in the future. Oh, you want us to steal stuff, okay. Oh no, you can rent out everything that you need to do it. And I believe the one that we will be doing is Pepper's Ghost, if you guys want to look that up. There are, there are several different kinds of holograms. So we're going to be breaking school property? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Believe it or not. Well, you know, not not well, everything well, results well, in the well, universe. Well, <laughs> Um, and then the following week, we have great game design debate number four. It's true. It's there. That was to be determined. 
Uh, we don't know a topic. <coughs> and you know, I'm open for any topic that you guys. Oh boy, Andre. We're doing them all at once, like the Hobbit movies. Yeah. Well, mm. unlike the Hobbit movies, there's only like two weeks in between each of ours. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we'll be doing them all at once. Can we do so, episodal game design bits? We're going to do episodes. We're only on 20 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. We'll stop right in the middle of it and say, 